This episode of Test Drive is brought to you by LMAC and their EV Duty Smart Home Charger. Hello folks, you join us at the end of January and it's raining here in southwestern Ontario. The snow is gone and because it's raining we've decided to start this video on the inside. Today we're driving the 2024 Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. This is the GT trim with super all-wheel control and pricing for this is about $60,000 Canadian. A little bit better if you're in the States. Pricing for, for the same type of vehicle, same trim and everything, uh, but they call it the SEL Premium. So you're getting the same equipment, about $51,400 in the US. And this is the new generation Outlander. We drove this a couple years ago, just the regular Outlander, but the plug-in might make more sense for some people. And Victor, you've been spending the whole week with it. How has it been for your first time behind the wheel of the Outlander? This has been interesting because Mitsubishi has taken a very different approach to building a plug-in hybrid. It doesn't really use um, the engine as you know, the primary um, drivetrain, it more uses the motors as the main thing. So really the engine is only here to charge the batteries and to power the motors. So we have front and back electric motors. This is an electric all wheel drive, so it's completely separate. The engine is still connected to the front mm -hmm. uh, wheels via a, you know, some sort of clutch packs. Um, it has one gear basically and the only gear that it has is an overdrive gear that connects to the wheel so at certain um, speeds you could get this vehicle to drive on just the engine and directly to the wheels but most other times the engine is powering the batteries and the battery is powering the wheels. It's sort of how the Chevrolet Volt worked as well. The Volt wasn't, actually the front wheels on that weren't connected at all to the engine. It really was a generator only. But you know, back in 2013 when the Outlander Fev first came out, it was sort of revolutionary. Fast forward to, to 11 years now, it's not quite as novel anymore. A lot of, you know, especially luxury vehicles now have all wheel drive when it comes to their electric portion for the uh, for their plug-in hybrids uh, yeah having both series and parallel hybrid in this is a little different but you know for the most part you know the rest of the market has kind of caught up to Mitsubishi in terms of how they can offer electric all-wheel drive but Mitsubishi still thinks that they do have a compelling offering here when it comes to that yeah having you know a decent mix between the two. The, the total power, uh, combined horsepower for this is 253 horsepower. It's not bad for a compact crossover, but we also have three rows on this, which is typical for an Outlander, but strange for this segment. Yeah, the, the car is actually very preppy off the line, especially if you put it into power mode. This has all in total 332 pound-feet of torque. So getting off the line and, you know, doing um, low speed pickups or, or even highway uh, merging is not going to be a problem at all, but this has three rows in, in that, such a well relatively small vehicle. Yeah. It's uh, the third row is miniature. It's it's there, and we we talked about it even on the previous uh, generation, and we've talked about it with the new generation as well. You know, it's. It's as far as I know the only compact crossover in the segment in in existence that has three rows, and I mean I guess if you've got small kids it could be okay. You know for us, you know my situation where we have three people at any given time in the car, we don't need the third row. But if family comes over, I guess you could throw somebody in that third row if you really needed to. But yeah, you're you basically if you don't have legs, you can fit in the back seats. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. This is. I would say smaller than, you know, those 911 dog seats. <laughs> yeah, pretty so. much, right? Yeah, like there is no space. But let's talk a little bit about the looks. You know, again, we've touched on it when we did the Outlander before with this generation, this being the fourth generation Outlander. Yeah, I'd say it's very handsome, very Nissan, obviously. This is based on the same platform that the Rogue is, is using. And the interior, you can kind of tell, it's got the same gauge cluster and same infotainment system. And the interior really is laid out about the same as it is on the Rogue, but the exterior is quite different. Yeah, the exterior looks quite nice. Um, the white paint is a slight metallic, so you get this shiny finish. Very nice looking, and you get a black roof, which is reminiscent of some, you know, some Range Rover type stuff. Yeah. Um, so uh, overall design, the front looks a little bit funky with the <laughs> with the chrome outlines at the lights, but the back, it looks very nice. It sort of reminds me a little bit of a Highlander um, from the back, the, yeah. the tail lights a little bit. 
Um, the exterior is is. I wouldn't say it's it's ugly or very very beautiful, but you know it's very acceptable. I think it's it's uh, most people that would consider buying this wouldn't be too concerned about the looks. Yeah. The inside is also very nice looking. Um, obviously, you've got the screen here that looks a little bit dated with some really fat borders <laughs> um, around it, but you do get a fully digital gate cluster, which gets you a lot a lot of information. I've got everything from, you know, electric power, electricity consumption to fuel consumption to um, all-wheel drive power distribution, as well as how much steering I'm inputting. And I've got a head-up display. So in the information department, I am fully satisfied. Yeah, and even feature-wise, we've got uh, dual zone climate control, heated front seats, heated steering wheel, massaging front seats, which might have been on the whole time. It's really just kind of pushing and it's very mechanical, but I mean, the feature's there. Pano sunroof, full suite of safety tech. I mean, it's pretty much in line with everything else in the marketplace, but uh, yeah, there's really no, aside from the electric drive portion and Mitsubishi's all-wheel control, there isn't any features that necessarily stand out compared to the competition. Yeah, it's it's fully loaded, I would say, but um, as expected, sort of in in this price range. One good thing about this is that you can get this. <laughs> yes, yeah, absolutely. There's still a lot of supply issues with vehicles, so you know, finding plug-in hybrids in general can be kind of tough. So these ones seem to be pretty readily available, and uh, you know, if you want to get your hands on one, there's some deals. You know, obviously there's some incentives for it as well because it's a plug-in hybrid. Then you're getting the the benefits of having that. This has updated. Obviously, we talked about it when we drove it before, but we're now using a 20 kilowatt-hour lithium-ion battery. Mitsubishi says it's good for about 61 kilometers of full electric driving, but the overall fuel efficiency doesn't seem to have changed too much. When we first drove it in 20, or when we last drove it in 2020, previous generation in Quebec, our fuel testing gave us a 4.7 liter per 100 kilometer result. But here, a little bit more, despite being a bigger battery, right? In the test loop, we we were able to do 4.8 liters per 100 kilometers with about 80% of electric charge to begin with, which is a respectable number, but. I do expect a little bit more considering our test loop is 100 kilometers. Mm -hmm. This ended up doing about 38 kilometers fully on electric before the engine kicked on and started trickle charging, you know, switching between engine and, and electric. So if you do the math a little bit, we're probably looking at like seven-ish liters per 100 kilometers yeah. for the rest of the way. Not a very respectable number. Um, it's not too bad either. We all know the RAV4 Prime is the market leader in terms of fuel efficiency mm -hmm. and and the hybrid system. So this unfortunately cannot match that. No. But you can actually buy one of these <laughs> instead of the RAV4 Prime, which I think the wait list now is like five years or Whoa, something. Whoa, that's so, pretty bad. So um, this might be something to consider. In terms of price point, they're very similar. You get third row seats here. It's about 10 centimeters longer than the RAV4 mm -hmm. Prime, um, about the same price if you're looking at the top trim. Features wise, it's basically all the same. You get a foot kicking trunk opening as well. You get some obviously massaging seats that's not that great. No, they're the not. The <laughs> Bose sound system is acceptable. I wouldn't say it's that good though. Overall, it's a pretty decent car to consider as a day daily driver, family vehicle all sorts of stuff like that. Um, the all-wheel drive performs very well because it's electric motors, so the it, it can send power to, to front and back very quickly uh, and change the power distribution very, very quickly. So it's it's been very enjoyable driving this, you know, in weathers like this. Plus you have different terrain modes as well, right? Exactly. So it's not, some cars, you know, it really is just like an eco mode and a normal mode and maybe like an off-road mode, but there are several different modes to choose from, including like a mud mode, snow mode. So we're going to be testing that. So one of the reasons why I'm not driving this one today is because I'm actually going out to Montreal next week. I'm going to be doing an event with Mitsubishi, taking a look at the Outlander plug-in hybrid on a track to see how this performs in rough weather. So. This is the only time I'm ever gonna say it, but I'm hoping it snows in the next week so we have something to test it with because if Montreal is even remotely close to what we've got going on here, there ain't gonna be any snow to be testing this in. 
Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so a lot of you guys will be curious about the fuel economy after the battery is completely depleted. I got the chance to take this up to Blue Mountain and down from Blue Mountain to GTA. And driving up there, I was fully charged and I was able to get about 4.6, 4.5 liters per 100 kilometers. That's about 140 kilometers of, uh, of driving um, with the full battery charge. So that's really good. Mm -hmm. On the way back, it wasn't too bad either. I did take advantage of the charge mode because there are indeed some tricks to be able to drive this car at best fuel efficiency. So using the charge mode, I was able to get 7.6 liters per 100 kilometers, again, about 140 kilometers of driving. Mm -hmm. If you don't use the charge mode, it seems like according to EPA, you're only gonna get about nine liters of combined fuel economy after the after the battery is, is depleted. So you do wanna pay a little bit more attention to, to how you drive this vehicle. Oftentimes, you can see the, the power distribution, so where the power is going, engine to battery, battery to wheels, something like that. But when you are charging it on the road, what you really want to do is make sure or try and get the vehicle to, to drive the wheel, to, the engine to drive the wheel and to charge the battery at the same time. So you wouldn't really want to see the battery powering the wheels, which I'm going to insert a clip for this to show you what it should look like. It seems like that gives you the best fuel economy mm. because it's, it's driving the vehicle and using the residual power to power the battery and charge it up. So it, yeah. That's ultimately what we want out of this. If you are in that's the market right. for a Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid, fuel efficiency should be top of mind. I don't think the top feature is gonna be that third row. It yeah. really will come down to how much can you charge it? How much are you gonna be saving on fuel? You know, and obviously as fuel prices, you know, they've kind of averaged out now, but yeah. you know, electricity has gone up, unfortunately. So you have to kind of consider all of those things when you factor into the, the price of the vehicle. So at 60K, is it worth it to get something like this? Uh, only you will be the one to tell. Yeah, overall, this is a very decent offering uh, for the market. It's not very popular, but it's readily available. There are a few things that I really don't like about this car, though. Okay. The first one being the brakes. Ah. Um, the, it's, these brakes are very soft to begin with and then very sensitive halfway through. So uh, Mitsubishi didn't really do a great job integrating the regen braking and the actual physical braking. So it's difficult to modulate, to, to put it that way. Um, so oftentimes I find myself braking quite jerkily. Okay, in yeah. a sense. Not as smooth as it Not should as be. Not as smooth as it should, exactly. Um, the steering wheel, I like the fact that it's ventilated and perforated, but the texture is very, even though it's a leather steering wheel, it's, it feels a bit um, rubbery. Okay. So it's the same situation in the Acura that, that we've tried. Yes. It doesn't feel the best. Um, there definitely are better executions of perforated steering wheel out there. So something to consider because that's ultimately the thing that you're going to be touching all the time yeah, when you're driving point. this. But that pretty much does it for this episode. As we've mentioned, we've done the video, uh, we've done plenty of videos on the Outlander before. We're gonna be doing one coming up, so stay tuned for that. But if you have any questions about this vehicle, as always, we do get back to everybody in the comments, so leave a comment below. Let us know what you think of the Outlander plug-in hybrid. Is it a vehicle you're considering? Have you cross-shopped it with other things? Would you like to see us compare it to something? Let us know. We do try to get back to everybody. We also encourage you to subscribe and like the video as you will be able to help us grow the channel as we continue our upward trend to get to our 50,000 subscriber milestones. So thanks for watching. Until next time, take care. See you next time.